So if you clicked on this video or any of my lore videos here on YouTube, it's probably because you were confused about something you saw or read while playing Elden Ring and decided to search it up so you could try and understand it. And if you're like me during your first playthrough, then you decided not to look anything up. Nothing that could tell me where I needed to go, what I needed to do, and nothing that would explain the story. So basically, I was obnoxiously confused after my first playthrough. So during my second playthrough, it was completely dedicated to learning and understanding everything I came across. I read every item description, no matter if it was a great rune or a tiny mushroom, because sometimes the smallest things bring out the most detail in the most unlikely of places. However, after about 350 hours of playing this game since launch, there are still some things that I'm very confused about when it comes to the lore. And I'm sure I could make several videos after this one called 10 more things or 10 even more unexplainable things when it comes to Elden Ring's lore. And I'm starting to get to a point where I think the story was purposely designed to be extremely confusing because having hard evidence and facts doesn't lead to more community discussion and exposure like we're doing right now, which only helps grow the game and its influence on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, wherever people have these discussions. All of that helps grow the game. So I'm saying maybe George R. R. Martin and the writers from From Software made it purposely impossible to understand the story so that we would all have these discussions. It helps grow the game. And I'm not trying to say that I don't like the story. I actually really do enjoy it, but sometimes I feel like I'm a detective who's working around the clock to try and solve a mystery case. And as soon as I think I'm getting close or I have a clue and I'll make a video feeling really good about it, and then I'll get a 15 paragraph comment explaining something I've never even heard of. And I'll just question everything I thought I knew about something. So what I'm saying is that some things in this game just are not fully explainable. So here's just some of those things I haven't been able to understand. Also, if you want to be a part of these videos and discuss some theories with me in my community, follow and message me on Twitter. And you can also join our Discord where we come up with some pretty cool theories there as well. So let's get into this confusing video. The first thing I'm confused with are the recycled spirit bosses that we fight, starting with Loretta. While I understand that Loretta left the Carrion Royals in order to help the Albanorics find salvation so that their race wouldn't be completely destroyed, what I don't understand is why the spirit of Loretta is in the Carrion Manor. Because I find Loretta's story to make a lot of sense, except for this spirit boss. The Albanorics were being slaughtered, Loretta wanted to help them, so she became a member of Nicholas Halig Tree because it was used as a hidden place of salvation for the Albanorics. That all makes sense and it's a good story but why is there a spirit summon of loretta here is this a summon that ronnie placed herself to guard the entrance of the three sisters towers kind of like the summon ronnie used when we fight against her mother ranala or does loretta still want to be a part of the carrion royals but also wanted to help the albanorix so she just left a spirit summon in this location or is this just a filler boss location so that the castle can actually have a boss that we can fight within it. All of these could be the answer, but to me it just feels like filler. It's the Carrion Manor, so they may have thought, mm, this manor is kind of dull with content maybe. Let's just put a Carrion Royal Night boss here because it fits the theme. But then we see Loretta again at the Halig Tree and then I just got very confused. Maybe she's attacking me here because I unlocked the hidden path to the Halig Tree because I guess I did open up the path to the Halig Tree and the Albanorks are no longer safe potentially. And then I guess that would ask the major question as to why pretty much everybody in the Lands Between and their grandma attack you without even thinking even though you're trying to mend the Elden Ring, which is what most of the people in the Lands Between would want. But then we saw the Flame of Frenzy ending that we can choose, and it made a lot more sense that everybody attacks us on sight. They can't really trust the Tarnish to do what they want us to do. And then there's another spirit location that I question as well, which is Moog fighting us in the subterranean shunning grounds. I get that this is just a summon and it isn't really Moog, 
but why would he be guarding the entrance to the Flame of Frenzy and the Three Fingers? I did hear an interesting theory that Morgoth actually put Moog's Spirit Summon here to help guard the entrance because Morgoth obviously wouldn't want us to become the new Lord of Chaos, which honestly that theory makes the most sense to me because Morgoth seals the entrance until we defeat Morgoth himself. But wouldn't Morgoth have to actually be alive for the summoning location he placed of Moog to actually work? I guess not. That's super confusing to me. Maybe it's just a fitting area for Moog to be in since Moog and Morgoth were shackled in the sewers from birth for being omens. So they likely know what's been going on below the capital city more than anybody else. There's just nothing that actually answers why Moog would be here since he seems to be completely preoccupied with waking Mikola up so that he can use him to become his own Elden Lord within his new dynasty under the outer god of the formless mother. But just like what Ronnie does with Renala, it seems like you can just make manifestations of certain characters. They don't actually have to be alive or actually be there for them to fight against you. And also when it comes to Moog trying to be the consort to Mikola, wouldn't that just be incest? Since Moog and Mikola are technically half brothers, or are they just brothers? Since Radagon and Merica are the same person, which we'll get into later because I'm getting carried away here and confusing myself just talking about this. So let's just move on to some more confusing spirit locations. Like why is Godfrey's golden spirit here before we face Morgoth? Is this just another spirit summon location that Morgoth placed to stop our path to the Erd Tree? Is this the Greater Will's manifestation of Godfrey in his perfect Elden Lord form? Or is this really Godfrey fighting us from another land far away, but he isn't physically in the Lands Between yet, and he's trying to serve the Greater Will even though he was banished from the Lands Between for technically being too good at his job and defeating all of their enemies, which is another thing I can get into that Queen Merica took away Godfrey's guidance of grace because they had nobody else to fight. And then they banished him and his army to battle in a faraway land, like the Badlands, in hopes that they would get their grace back if they did. That all, in my opinion, has to do with Merica's big plan that I already made a video on, but this summon location of Godfrey, yet again, just feels like filler and doesn't make a ton of sense. And speaking of filler, I'll just talk about this really quickly, but why is there a snail summoning the god skins in the mountaintops of the giants? Like at this point, we have already fought these guys several other times in many other places, but just the fact that the snail is summoning them in this random cave in the mountaintops just feels like Miyazaki really liked the Godskin's music and wanted us to hear it over and over again. Which by the way, the music for this fight absolutely slaps, so I'm not complaining about that. But it still doesn't stop my confusion of why we fight them in this area and honestly so many other areas. Like when I kill a boss in all of the From Software games, I like to have that feeling that I defeated a great foe and won't have to deal with them ever again after I do beat them. It makes me feel like I actually won. Well, Elden Ring just says, fuck you, you're going to have to beat some of these bosses multiple times. I guess it kept me on my toes, but it still was super confusing in regards to the lore. So after this one, I think I'm done with being confused about the spirits in reused bosses. It just feels like a lot of filler to me, but let's move on to the mausoleums. I get that these giant mausoleums are connected to the demigods because there's a lot of good evidence that supports this. The greatest piece of evidence we can gather is from the Eclipse Crest Heater Shield, which reads, the sun in Eclipse is said to be the symbol of the wandering mausoleum where the soulless demigods slumber. There's also a ghost outside of the Church of Pilgrimage that says, the mausoleum prowls, cradling the soulless demigod. O America, Queen Eternal, he is your unwanted child. So immediately when I hear the word soulless and being the child of America, I think of Godwin whose soul was killed in the Night of Black Knives. If this were true, it would make much more sense that Godwin was purposely sacrificed by America and Ronnie for their bigger secret plot in the Night of Black Knives if he was her unwanted child. But then there's another ghost in Castle Soul that says, Lord Mikola, forgive me. 
The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now your divine halic tree. So now, of course, I'm just more confused. Like, what do they mean by soulless? Do they mean this literally like Godwin not having a soul and just being a husk of a body? Or do they mean it as another word for evil? But what can be referred to as evil in the lands between? Nobody knows since everything and everyone is trying to kill us. Except for our cool turtle dog Pope, who I like to believe commands the mausoleums as a place for the demigods to repent their sins. And what evidence do I have for this? Absolutely nothing besides that the mausoleums look like a turtle, or I'm sorry, you guys like to call them dogs. We are really all out here trying to confuse ourselves, aren't we? To go along with this, what the hell are the Evergales? I understand how they work as prisons for people who are seen as traitors in some way. But then we get to the consecrated snowfields and an entire town of, by the way, absolute bullshittery is trapped inside of an Evergale. So I guess that means you can trap anything inside an Evergale. Also to go along with this, who is Godfrey? Godafro? Godafroy? Go to, go to Fra, no idea how to pronounce his name, but why does he look exactly like Godric? And from some comments I've received, you guys are telling me that Godaf Godafroy, however you say his name, is a completely different person than Godric, even though they look exactly alike. And I've heard some theories that Godafroy was supposed to look different from Godric, but from software supposedly ran out of money? and just decided to use the same model as Godric to save time, change his name, and they just called it a day. I find it hard to believe that they just ran out of money, but the game did do better than they originally predicted, so I guess that's possible? Either way, that just makes me extremely confused. Like, the Evergales and Godafroy really gave me a headache when I tried to find more information on them, but all I know right now is that don't let Blyde out of Eiji's Evergale. Don't do it unless you want to cry yourself to sleep tonight. Also, can we talk about who the fuck is Renna? We can read from the Snow Witch set that reads, once born by the snowy crone who the young Ronnie encountered deep in the woods. She was a witch and well-versed in cold sorceries. It is said that the doll that houses Ronnie's soul was modeled after her. That old witch was Ronnie's secret mentor. Now, honestly, since the game came out and we learned this, we have all just been assuming that Renna is the name of Ronnie's mentor. Since she inherits a doll that looks like her, Ronnie uses her name as an alias at one point, and she has her own tower next to Ronnie's. But I've received some comments saying that Renna is just short for Renala, and that her mother was actually her mentor. Now, this is my least favorite theory, but I guess we can't completely discredit that since we don't know who Renna is. We're all just guessing. And honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm just guessing with 90% of the lore throughout the entire game. It's very frustrating, but fun all at the same time. Next thing I want to talk about is, do we really know if this is Mikola? I know Moog calls him Mikola in this cutscene, but I'm still not 100% sold because we can clearly see that the cocoon we find in Mogwin's palace was taken from this spot in the Halig tree. And I've heard some theories that Mikola is this body form we can see that have formed in the roots of the boss room. Now, I don't think this is actually true. Like this probably is Mikola in this cocoon in Mogwin's palace, but why is his cocoon resting on a pelvic bone? Was he being rebirthed by this motherly figure of the Halig tree? Is that why his body looks to be kind of malformed inside the cocoon? Because in my opinion, he looks very different from the opening cutscene where Mikola has flowing blonde hair. He seems much smaller than Moog. But then when we see him in Mogwin's palace, he's clearly much larger than the cutscene and all of his hair is just gone to point out just a couple of things I noticed. And finally, the last thing I'm confused about, and I'm sure all of you saw this one coming, is how the f*** are Radagon and Merica the same person, and how at the same time can they have children? Whenever I'm explaining the family line aspect of Elden Ring in my videos, I always have to randomly mention that Merica and Radagon are the same person, 
just in case someone out there doesn't know that. Like, I can go with the fact that they're the same person. I started accepting these things when I started talking to a Pope dog in a giant pot. But trying to think of how the same person can fuck themselves so hard that they actually get pregnant and have children is quite confusing. But I can't be thinking that basic, right? We haven't seen how anything comes to life in this world. Everything could be born by eggs for all we know. It's not the conventional birthing process that we know of in our world. Like you can have a mother and a father, but that doesn't mean only the mother in the lands between has to birth the child and that they need to do the dirty deed to actually reproduce, which thinking this way just confuses me even more than I already was. But I like to tell myself these things that really make no sense in my brain to try and understand how other things might happen in the world of Elden Ring. And maybe there are answers to all of these questions that I just haven't pieced together at this point. And most of the time you guys do send me some really interesting theories that you make on your own, but then I'll find a clue that completely discredits my own theory and that theory that you sent me. It's all just very confusing. Probably like the format of this video, which has somewhat been a frustrating mess of information. And while I would love to be the dictionary of all things Elden Ring for you guys, I'm just a human being like all of you who's obsessed with figuring out the story of this amazing game. However, I am starting to come to the realization that it might just not be possible to piece all of the information together to come up with a cohesive, understandable story. It's complicated, but I love the game so much that I don't care about the frustrations I have with certain aspects of the lore. It's always fun to speculate, so let me know what you guys think. If you want early access to these videos along with some other really cool benefits, join our Patreon along with these cool people like Pascal, John David, Arthea, Hunter Elliott, and Blacklisted. I will always shout you guys out in every video I make. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.